According to the Sefer Yitzirah, there are ten spherot, ten spheres through which God created the world. As the Midrash says, God created his world with ten items. And these ten items are identified as Kesar, the crown, Chachma, Bina, wisdom, understanding, Chesed, kindness, Gvura, judgment, Tiferes, beauty, Netzach, victory, Hod, glory, Yesod, connection, communication, and Malchut. Malchut is the art of speaking, the art of authority, kingship. And what's so special about that? Well, let me tell you the Arya Kaplan doctrine based on Sefi Yitzhira. Many of you are students of science and you study string theory. One of the most prevalent theories of string theory is that there are five dimensions to our universe. This idea of a five dimension universe is first promulgated by the Sefi Yitzhira. The Sefi Yitzhira, small book written somewhat, sometime at least 2,000 years ago. Scholars say it was the first century before, after the Common Era, um, before the destruction of the Temple, or a little afterwards. Some say it was transmitted orally by Abraham. But whatever the case may be, the book called Sefi Yitzir is a small little book. You could probably fit all of its words on one typewritten page. This was the work that the priests focused on for a lifetime. They became adept and expert in the power of the Hebrew language and its symbolism and the relationship between the language, the person, the cosmos, the physical cosmos, and the spiritual world. It saw parallel between the limbs of a human being, the time, and space. At any rate, in the Sefi Yitzir, the book of formation, he describes as follows, that there are five systems. Keter Malchus, crown kingship, the highest to the lowest, Chachma Bina, wisdom, understanding, Chesed, Gvura, love, judgment, Tiferet Yisod, beauty, attachment. Netzach and Hod, glory and victory. Or victory and glory. And these ten spherot have two poles, one opposite the other. And each of these create a dimension. And so there are five dimensions to this universe. Three of them are in time. One of them, three of them are in space. One of them is in time, and the other is good and evil. But what happens is as follows. According to the Sefi Yitzhira, first there is the creation of time. After the creation of time, there's the creation of space. And finally, the actualization of the will, which is articulated in the mass, in the material of the world that although the material of the world existed before, it does not take form or shape until after the creation of time and space. Now, time comes before space, and good and evil, which causes the material world, is both before and after the creation of time and space. Time and space are creatures created things existing independent of material. Space is three-dimensioned, time is one dimension, good and evil, material in its source, is the fifth dimension. How could an ancient group of rabbis be able to sense this profundity, to be able to say that time is a dimension? Time can be measured. Time has an equivalence in the material in three dimensions. 
you can make a bigger three dimensions in less time, or a bigger time in less three dimensions. And they're both equivalent. And then there's also the dimension of good and evil, the creation of material from God's will. Altogether, five dimensions. This was written almost 2,000 years ago. It is more consistent than present physical theory because it accounts for an independent existence of space. Not ether, but an independent existence of space as well as an independent existence of time. That's why Professor Hawking, no teacups, no broken teacups, will go back to this source. Because time is not just a movement of energy. Time is a procedure, the process of a first and an after, a prior and an after, a rule and its results, applications, an axiom and the proof that comes as a result of the axiom, a seed and the plant. They can be simultaneous, but the seed precedes the plant. And so it is. The book of Yetzirah, old document, still current. 